Life science is unified by certain themes. Kabilang dito yung mga napag-usapan na natin, yung levels of organization, kung saan we started with the atoms up to the complex biosphere. Isa pa ay yung flow of energy, kung saan nalaman natin yung kahalagahan ng photosynthesis. Again, ito yung capture and synthesis of energy from sunlight na ginagawa ng mga halaman and other autotrophic organisms to make complex vital molecules. And yung transfer of energy from organism to organism, napag-usapan din natin yun sa flow of energy. Ganun din yung evolution, which explains how all kinds of organisms came into existence and how organisms of the past are related to the organisms that are alive today. Alright, isa pa sa unifying theme ng life science ay yung interacting systems. Sabi dito, living things interact with each other, not only with each other but also with their environment. Now, how does this interaction take place? So, tanda natin yung flow of energy, di ba? This is actually a way of interaction between and among living things. Pero hindi lamang through the transfer of energy. Kasama rin dito yung transfer or yung exchange of information and matter. Halimbawa ay eh, yung alam na alam natin na exchange ng gases sa environment via cellular respiration wherein animals take in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. Ito yung opposite sa ginagawa ng plants. They need carbon dioxide and they release oxygen via photosynthesis. Simply put, dahil sa ganitong interaction, kailangan ng animals ang plants and of course, kailangan ng plants ang animals to support their lives. Now, ano makikita natin dito? Yung interdependence. Alright? Because a living community is highly structured and interdependent. Now, for example, tayong mga tao, we have the reliance sa ating environment. In what way? We need food, water, and shelter, di ba? So, uh, sige, inarrow down natin. Tayong mga tao, we cannot make our own food. Of course, we can cook our own food, but we cannot make our own. Saan natin nakukuha yun? From plants. Kasi nagpo-photosynthesize sila. They make their own food. From animals also, di ba? Pork, chicken. But these animals cannot make their own food too. Anong kailangan nila? Plants. And also, plants need organisms that release carbon dioxide to support their lives and functions. Another example ay yung mga puno. Hindi lamang sila importante kasi nagbibigay sila ng food for humans and animals. Also, nagpo-provide sila ng shelter sa maraming mga animals like birds and yung malilit na animals like tertiary. Alright? And actually, this interdependence is the result of a long process of evolution. Halimbawa, yung mga um, mycorrhizal fungi. Ito yung naging essential para sa transition ng plants from water to land. So, tandaan natin, wala pang mga plants sa lupa nun. Uh, before sila mag-move into terrestrial life, nasa tubig sila. So, what this symbiotic fungi did was, uh, nag-attach sila dun sa mga ugat, dun sa mga roots ng mga plants. Tapos, yun yung nakatulong sa mga plants para mag-absorb ng nutrients and water. Okay? And lastly, ay yung co-evolution. Ang halimbawa niyan ay yung uh, mutual relationship ng bees at saka ng flowers. So, for millions of years, yung mga bees and flowers, nag-evolve sila together in this co-evolutionary relationship ay responsible para sa diversity ng both species. Kasi, di ba, yung flowers, nagpo-provide sila ng food for bees, yung nectar. And yung plants, yung flowers, dahil di naman sila palipat-lipat ng pwesto, nadidisperse pa rin o naiikalat yung mga pollen nila to other plants dahil dun sa mga bees na lumilipad. So, dumadami sila dahil sa fertilization of plants of the same species. Alright, so yun lang para sa ating lesson, which is about interacting systems, one of the unifying themes in life science.